India Alpha Bravo 717 checking in as Bunny plus one. Check two. Got it, in India Alpha Bravo 717. You have just been selected to be part of my special event for this month's event of Zeo Flight Simulator. I'm coming in for a landing. Copy that. For crying out loud, that's all I need is that rabbit exploding on my deck! What up, tubers? It's Bunny here with my co pilot, Wormy, Malkreed. And in this week's video, we're back at Geoflight Simulator. So, in this month's event for Geoflight Simulator, it is going to be the Aircraft Carrier Challenge. Namely, what aircraft, which aircraft are able to land on the deck of a Nimitz class aircraft carrier, which is the one that I'm about to land on here? And can that plane also take off from that aircraft carrier? Or can it do neither? So to kind of demonstrate that, I am going to just do a round of this using this Canadian Air Force de Havilland DHC-6 Otter. Now, I'm coming in on final toward this moving runway right here. In fact, I've set up a 30 knot headwind just to kind of simulate the movement of the aircraft carrier. Because when these things are out at sea, you know, they're not really stationary. I'm gonna apply the brakes. I'm Almost to the landing strip. Okay, flaps full. Oh, okay, come on, come on, you could do it. Oh, barely. Oh, see, just like that, I am barely able to make it onto the deck of the carrier. In fact, I've even stopped shortly after scaling the edge of the carrier. So the first part of the challenge is to see which aircraft are able to do what I just did, namely landing on the deck. Since the DHC-6 is not in the competition, it's not part of the competing field, I decided to do the basic test run using this aircraft just to see how it performs. So then the second part of the aircraft carrier challenge is to see which aircraft can take off from the deck of the carrier. Now part of that takeoff challenge, if you will, is to see if the aircraft is able to take off from a catapult's distance away from the edge, the front edge of the carrier. So right now I'm hooked onto what is likely catapult two of the deck of this carrier, which I forgot to mention the name, is the USS John C. Stennis. So indicated by this darker strip right here, what the catapult is supposed to do is launch your aircraft from 0 to 160 knots in no more than 2 seconds. In short, the catapult's purpose is to launch aircraft to high enough speeds. Those aircraft which may need more room than the whole length of the deck provides. Well, I think I spent long enough on the deck of the carrier with the DHC-6, so I'll go ahead and take off. We'll go on Cat 2. We'll take off, and I will show you our competing field for this week's competition, this month's competition, not this week's. See? I'm able to take off. I'm able to take off. See? Yeah! Wormy, I give you the honors of introducing our competing field this month. Malkreed? 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 And last month's competition winner, Malkreed, Malkreed. And finally, our runner-up from last month, Malkreed. Oh, and then of course, there was the Cessna 172, but it got eliminated last month 
after it had given us a very low altitude apogee and not a sufficient amount of time under 1,000 feet. So to start off this month's competition, we are going to be bringing in last month's competition winner, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. So we are going to begin with landing on the deck of the carrier. We're going to see which aircraft are able to land on the deck of this carrier. Now, this is just a first little buzz run for right now. I'm not actually going to land this attempt. But basically what you have to do is you got to line yourself off, up, follow the ball, uh, land on the deck, hopefully don't fall off into the drink. Now you get two points if you can land and stop on the landing strip, one point if you're just able to land on the deck at all, and zero points if you either land short or you overrun the deck and end up in the drink. Now, Wormy will be our official judge, the race official, if you will. He's going to be our official race official. Valkyrie. Yeah, that did sound kind of weird, didn't it? And as a final note before we officially begin the competition, whichever planes are able to land on the deck of the carrier itself will be the first ones to attempt a takeoff from the deck later in this event. Okay, so first off, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. This is going to be a fun one because it's really a matter of trying to slow down enough so that you can actually land on the carrier, not overrun it. But at the same time, you also have to make sure that you don't stall out and land short. So we're almost to the deck. And come on. Okay. Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh. 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 Oh, I think we made it. <gasps> yes! Having this wind to simulate the carrier moving, that was a genius idea. Well, at least I know now that an F-16 is able to move on to land on the deck of a carrier, at least when it's out at sea doing its business. And then for the rest of the landing part of the aircraft carrier challenge, we're just going to go down the line, down the field of our competing airplanes. And so our next one up is the pit special, the biplane. Now the smaller aircraft, I trust, will have a much easier time landing on the deck of the carrier than some of the faster aircraft, even some of the bigger aircraft. Mercury. Well, yeah, but I do predict that there will be some overrunners, and assuming I don't follow the ball, I might even land short with this aircraft. Now, I know for certain that I can land an aircraft on the deck of the carrier, wherever I landed, that is. But landing it solely on the landing strip right ahead, I haven't really done that too often. But let's see what we can do. And... Oh! Touchdown. Okay, keep it on the strip. Keep it on the strip. Whoa, I'm sliding out of control. Yes! Two points for the pit special. Our next one is this tiny little Piper Cub. Now, this plane actually started very strong when it did, when it won the takeoff challenge back in March. But then last month during the altitude record challenge, it kind of struggled. In fact, I think. If the plane had spent as little as 4 seconds less under 1,000 feet, 
it probably would have been the plane eliminated from the games, not the Cessna. And given how slowly we are approaching the aircraft carrier, that tells you right off the bat that this thing is not even built for racing. This thing is primarily built just for joy rides, just to see, just to kind of practice flying itself. Hey, what does approaching the aircraft carrier look like from the inside of the aircraft? Some of the interior will even show up. There we go. So, aha. You descend. You can't really see the strip too well. Uh, give me the right thing. Oh. Oh, we are coming in a little high. I might need to just turn a little bit. Okay. We're back online for the runway, the landing strip. What do you call that thing in an aircraft carrier? Oh boy! Let's not dip too low. Not too low. Okay. Okay. Gentle. Gentle. Okay. And touchdown. Oh! It's like this thing just stalls out or something when you. What the? Well, I don't want to bounce. I don't want to bounce. Oh! Oh, it's because there's so much wind and this thing doesn't need a lot of speed to take off. It's just, huh, almost forgot about that fact. Huh, well, one would know to be careful then when deciding to land a Piper Cub on the deck of an aircraft carrier. And this thing gets two points, and so on to the next aircraft then. Okay, our next plane is a big one. So if I let the flaps come down, we have the Boeing 737, and I need to make sure that I'm applying every form of drag possible on this aircraft. Now, this is the first aircraft in this competition to have thrust reversers, so I will be able to... Um, I'll be able to have some other means of forcing the aircraft to slow down as I touch down on the deck, but I don't think I'm going to actually stop in time. No, we're going to overrun. Son of a digger, Wormy. If I had just applied the thrust reverser sooner, I probably could have landed that aircraft sooner. I, I could have been able to stop in time. But now we are on to the Boeing 747. And if the 73 isn't able to land on the carrier successfully, I do not have much faith that the 7-4 will be able to land on the deck. Come on. Uh, level your wings. Easy with it. And thrust reversers. Thrust reversers. Okay. No. We're not going to land. Uh, bye-bye. Okay, Wormy, if neither the 7-3 nor the 7-4 are able to land on the aircraft carrier, then let me tell you this. If I am able to successfully land the Airbus A380 on this deck, I'm buying us a round of carrot juice, okay? Thrust reversers, go! And... Oh! Oh, turn, turn! Turn, 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 ah! Well, Wormy, we're now on to aircraft that I am certain are going to be able to land on the carrier, or at least one aircraft that I am certain will land there. The Q400, flaps are down and locked, gears are down and locked. Let's see, I should probably add a little power just to ensure that I don't stall out. Even as we approach 150 knots, I probably do want to be careful with how fast I try to fly as I approach the carrier. Uh, easy with it. Okay. 
spoilers thrust reversers wait this thing doesn't have spoilers okay it just has oh no ah poop 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 and i don't think i'm recovering this one either Alrighty, the Concorde's the last plane to attempt landing on the carrier for this competition. And then after this, immediately after this, we are going to try taking off from the aircraft carrier. So, let's see. If we can keep it steady. Oh, I better turn on the parking brakes. And thrust reversers now. And stop, 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 stop. Never mind. Uh, oh, okay, I was able to pull out of that. Hey, Wormy, do I get points for being able to uh, recover the aircraft? Mount great. Okay, we're on to the second half of the aircraft carrier challenge. And to start us off with what is going to be the takeoff portion of this challenge, we have with us the first aircraft to get the most amount of points in the landing portion of the challenge, the pit special, the biplane. It was the first one that was able to land on this landing strip here. So for the takeoff portion of the aircraft carrier challenge, each plane gets three chances to take off. Their first chance will be from right here at the end of this catapult here on the bow end of the aircraft carrier. So if planes are able to take off, if a plane is able to take off from here, then it is going to be awarded three points. If the plane is unable to take off just using this catapult portion, then it is going to get a second chance all the way at the end of the carrier deck and try to take off using this landing strip right here marked by the yellow and white dotted line going along the center. And if they're able to take off from there, from here, they get awarded two points. If they're unable to do that, then they get one more chance back here and they basically have to use the entire length of the carrier to try to take off. If they're able to take off then, then they get one point. And if they're unable to take off, then obviously they get zero points. One bonus point is awarded if the plane can actually take off before the end of the deck. Mercury. Well, if this plane is able to take off using the catapult, then it won't need to try to take off from the landing strip or using the entire length of the carrier because it's already proven that it can take off from the carrier. Well, I'm not going to keep this plane waiting any longer. I don't even think it's staying still right now. I'm going to go ahead and let's see if it can take off from just here. Engine full throttle. Okay, we got to keep it steady. And it takes off before the end of the carrier. And so, it gets three points for taking off from the catapult. A bonus point for taking off before the end of the carrier. For a total of four points. Okay, our next plane up is the Piper Cub. And can I even keep this thing still? Can I even keep it from taking off unintentionally before I even get to the catapults? I do not even dare try to bring the tail gear back down to the ground because I could start lifting just like that. Okay, brakes, brakes, okay. Okay, we're settled on the catapult. I think we're all set for the catapult. So let's go ahead and try taking off. Let's just get this thing level because it's going to just kind of fly. It's, it's going to take off right away, I imagine. Uh, time me, Wormy. How long does it take to get to take off?
Macreed. Macreed. Two seconds, and I'm already taking off. I'm barely going anything, and I've already taken off from the carrier. Look, I am... It's almost like I'm hovering, really. <laughs> this plane definitely gets four points, without a doubt. Okay, our next competitor to attempt the catapult is going to be our surprise lander for the competition, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. You know, honestly, I think I could have stopped the 737 or the 74 in time if I had applied the thrust reverser sooner. What do you say, Wormy? Malgrave. Yeah, you got a point, buddy. Okay, the F-16 is attached to the catapult. And I know for certain that this thing is going to launch as if it were attached to the catapult, as if the catapult were actually working on this aircraft carrier. Let's see, this thing's got flaps, so I will use those to allow the aircraft some extra lift. And this is actually a vehicle designed for the aircraft carrier. I mean, obviously, I've got the raw, um, what is it, the raw military, um, I've got the raw military division on this aircraft. It says United States Air Force, and aircraft carriers were made for the Navy, but whatever. Navy probably also uses F-16s as well, so we'll release the brake, and let's launch. What? You're just like me, who's on the kind of Yes! Yes! Okay, it's gonna get three points. It did not take off before the end of the carrier, but it continues on in the competition. I, at least I think it should. And other than that, besides the F-16, which is kind of right there in the middle of the competing field, it's just a matter of going down the lines to go down the competing field. So our next one up is the Boeing 737-700. And I don't think this plane is going to be able to launch from catapult's distance. But there's no way of knowing without trying, so, and since I'm a, kind of a crazy bunny at times, I am going to have the audacity to try to take off from an aircraft carrier using a big airplane like this one. Alright, so I got the flap set at, I think it's half, so... We're hooked up to the catapult, we're all set, release the brakes, full throttle, and can I even take off? Okay, pull up now. Uh, if it's black- Now that I'm back from the dead once again, let me make it clear that if an aircraft splashes into the drink just before it's able to lift off, then that takeoff attempt doesn't count. So therefore, the aircraft's not going to get its three points from launching from the catapults. But the flaps are set. We're go to see if the aircraft can take off just using the strip. Whoa! No wheelie! Uh, tail strike! Tail strike! Okay. Can I take off? Oh boy! Oh boy! Yes! And we are just going to ignore that tail strike as opposed to in March's competition. Is that cool with you, Wormy? Not great. Okay, so plank gets two points. It continues, well, it might not continue on. We'll see what happens. Alrighty, oh, Jumbo Joe. I'd like to see you try just to take off from this aircraft carrier. I don't even imagine that you'll even be able to take off. 
just because of the immense size. Malgrad! You're right, maybe mentioning the size like that is kind of inappropriate, huh? So, this plane isn't even going to be able to take off from the catapult, but let's just see how we go down. Okay, pulling up, gear up, and I'm dead. You know, Wormy, I think this is the first competition in the Jeffs game in which I've actually been crashing and dying. Malkery. Away with the sarcasm, will you? Anyway, aircraft is set up for takeoff, so I'll release the brake, engines full throttle, and let's just see if we're even able to take off from the landing strip. Okay, pulling up now. Okay, we're dropping. Gear up. We're not gonna make it. Alright, Jumbo Joe. You have one last chance to prove yourself. Can you take off using the entire length of the carrier? Now, we are not going to mind that the wing clips the tower because this thing isn't even solid for whatever reason. Okay. Pull up, gear up, oh no, this doesn't look, oh my golly, pinch me wormy, I am dreaming, I did not just manage to avoid the drink. But now the question is, can the giant A380 take off from an aircraft carrier? Now, 74 was just barely able to do so. However, I don't really think that's going to be possible with this jumbo jet. This really is a jumbo jet. Okay. Parking brake on. Okay. We're set up on the catapult. Look at it. This thing's so ginormous on the aircraft carrier. How is this? How did I even get this thing on the deck? Mercury. Well, we're set for the catapult. Let's watch this thing crash and die. Mercury. Yeah, a lot. Here we go. Down to the ocean! Actually, this aircraft kind of surprised me. It, I think if the deck had been just a little bit higher up, or if I had a little bit more speed, Malgrade, I think I would have been able to have taken off from the catapult. But if that is so, I think we might be able to take off from this landing strip here. Let's just see what happens. Okay, V1. Definitely V1. Okay, we're going to pull up now. Okay, right, gear up. Oh! Just barely holding on. We... Oh, yeah, <laughs> just barely made it. Okay, we're down to two remaining planes for this event. The Q400, which I'm about to try out now, and the Concorde. Uh, let's see, this thing's propellers are spinning very, very rapidly, it seems. Uh, well, not quite fast enough to uh, show the spinning of the blades, unless you bring it up to 20% thrust. In which case, it's causing me to roll too fast along the carrier deck. Okay, we're hooked up to the catapult. Flaps are coming down. And I think this plane should be able to take off from the carrier, no problem. Well, alrighty then, go on the catapult, and we are rolling! Hmm. 
Okay, pull up. Leaving the carrier deck. Bringing the gears in. Oh! Just barely managing to avoid splashing down in the ocean. And this plane is definitely going to continue on in the competition. So, the Concorde is going to be an interesting one. Because it is a supersonic aircraft. However, I do know that its acceleration at takeoff is not like that of the F-16. And I also know that it needs a lot of runway to take off. Heck, in March's competition, I was surprised that this wasn't the plane to be eliminated from the games. You know, this is something I like about the Jeff's games, these events that I'm doing. They're surprising me. Because, you know, in March's competition, I expected this plane to be eliminated. And it ended up being the MD-11 that was eliminated because race officials rule that it had a dirtier run. And in last month's competition, the Cessna was eliminated because it didn't do well enough. And after having done that Piper run, I was sure that that plane was going to be the one to be eliminated. Well, the way I see it... As this thing is hooked up to the catapult, it only needs to do as well as the 747 or better to advance in the competition. So without further ado, let's go on Cat 2. Mercury! Yeah, it does rhyme, doesn't it? Okay, we're pulling up. Gear up. Oh no! Okay, now we're lined up for the landing strip. We're going to try using that to take off. Here we go. Okay, pull up. We're past the deck. Oh, mama! Mama, 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 mama! Oh! Okay, we took off. We get two points for this aircraft. And that is going to end the competition. So if I throttle back so that I don't overspeed, it's time to... I'll just show the table here to show you the results for this month's competition. And as you can see, just based on the run that we just accomplished here in the Concorde, it shows that the 747 has been eliminated from the games. It did the worst on this aircraft carrier. I'm definitely not going to be using that aircraft to try to take off from aircraft carriers. I'm not going to be using that aircraft on aircraft carriers anytime soon is what I meant to say. Yeah, so we know who's eliminated from the games. So the winner... So as race official, Wormy has ruled that since the Piper Cub required less distance to land and take off, it carries home with it today its second win of the Jeff's games. Now, as I've mentioned before in this month's competition, if I had been able to uh, do some different corrective maneuvers during landing, some of these aircraft could have landed successfully on the aircraft carrier. But apparently, that was not meant to be. However, just for sport, let's see if I can land the Concorde. Just for sport, we'll just see what happened this round. Oh no. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, well, no, no. This is not a plane built to 
go on aircraft carriers. This is not a plane built to uh, land on them. And with that, I am calling an end to this week's episode of the Jeff's Games. So in next week's video, I'm thinking of going back to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. I have an idea for creating a jumbo amusement park, something that looks kind of like Disney World. Well, not exactly like Disney World, but something that kind of shows some similarities. I mean, you know Disney World, right? It's a big theme park. It's actually like four theme parks in one, essentially speaking. So yeah, in next week's video, I'll be starting on that bit of a project in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. And then for next month's event in the Jeff's Games, let me give you a little bit of a hint. Precipitation. Uh, let's say 50%. Oh, and now I'm above the storm. Okay. So, yeah, that's going to be next month's Jeff's Games event. Is going to be trying to take off and land in a storm. Did I even see the ground? Oh, boy! I'm about to curble here. I'm going 500 knots. I don't want to be going 500 knots. So yeah, next month's challenge in the Jeff's Games is to see how well aircraft can take off and land in inclement weather conditions. Now, I'm not going to do it with the Concorde right now because it's advancing. We're going to want to see how it performs in this competition. So now I'll go ahead and get above the storm. And with that, that is going to conclude this week's video. So for Wormy Capellier, I'm Rabbit McFlopsy. We hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you all next week. India Alpha Bravo, Mercury, checking out.